Oh, rotate. Orientation is locked. Rotate device back. <laughs> Am I live? Okay, I guess my uh, thingy Mick Jagger is stuck in this position. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle. And I wanted to say yesterday I was interviewed by Kayla Cox from her wonderful YouTube channel that's called Six Miles to Supper. And she uh, does intermittent fasting and she walks six miles a day and eats one meal per day. And she has lost 80 pounds. And she also interviews other people about their success stories with intermittent fasting and different eating styles and just talks to them about wor what works for them in terms of uh, food and exercise for health and fitness. And I had a positive time being interviewed, but I noticed that I'm not as brave when I interview, when I'm interviewed by other people, I'm not as brave as I am when I just talk on my own. So I wish that I wasn't so shy about that, but um, it's like I hold back with other people uh, as a way of being polite. Uh, so, okay, I'm trying to look at the lens and not just look at myself. There's me, there's the, there's the lens, there's the lens, there's me. <laughs> and my cat is sitting next to me. Kisun, kitty, kitty, kitty. He's the boy, he's the pretty boy. Okay, so I feel great. Um, today I'm off from art modeling, which is rare, and because last week I worked all seven days. So I wanted to say what I wish that I had said on the interview yesterday with Kayla Cox uh, from Six Miles to Supper. Look her up if you want something inspirational. Very, very good YouTube channel and website um, inspirational stuff going on there, and really positive community of all of her subscribers are fairly positive, supportive people, which is nice, because you know how mean people can be online and criticize each other and judge each other. So they are very positive people in that community. I wish that I had mentioned my cat. Um, my cat is mildly diabetic, and I, because I, I found out by taking him to the vet, and to make a long story short, in lieu of giving him insulin, instead of giving him insulin, I decided to focus on his diet. And the thing about humans, humans and cats and dogs, obesity and diabetes, they call it diabetes, is skyrocketing for both pets and humans. And uh, the theory is that a lot of that is just from eating so many carbs. And you know, so basically my cat, I'm able to not have to give him insulin because if I give him insulin, see what happens is you give somebody, you give a human insulin and they tend to gain weight and then you have to check your blood sugar and make sure it doesn't get too low because that could be life threatening. And if your blood sugar is really high or really low, it's really bad for you. So you have to be careful and try to find the happy medium and the right level. And the same thing with cats and dogs, their blood sugar needs to be not too high and not too low. So if you have a diabetic cat on insulin, you have to check their blood sugar by pricking their ear quite often. And my cat would not let me do that. I tried several times and I was able to check his blood sugar a few times, but he got really mad at me and it really traumatized him and hurt him. And I would belong to these support groups for diabetic cats on insulin. And some of the people there were very cruel to me and they <clears throat> implied that I wasn't doing the best thing for my cat by not giving him insulin. But the thing is, when you give a cat insulin, if their blood sugar gets too low, then you're supposed to feed them carbohydrates to make it go back up again. And then you're playing this game of making their blood sugar go up and down, up and down, up and down, which is very stressful to the cat. So I decided, and I'm not judging anyone for giving their cat insulin, if that's the best thing for your cat, do that. For my cat personally, switching him to a 100% raw meat diet, I feed him, has helped him uh, avoid having to take insulin. And he was kind of like too thin. He was very, very thin and he's gained some weight. Some diabetic cats are overweight. My cat was kind of underweight. And now he's slim and trim. Uh, but as far as I can tell, he's not underweight. I definitely wouldn't want him to be any thinner. So basically, I feed him lots of different kinds of meat that I get at the health food pet store. I've also made some of my own cat food in my blender for him, but you have to be careful to do the right mix. You have to do like 
80% muscle meat and I think, or 90% muscle meat and only 10% organ meat, which is like liver and heart. And you have to grind that up in your blender and you have to either put bone meal or eggshells so they get calcium. And then you're supposed to put like, I think eggs and salmon oil and different kinds of things to make the right mix. So I've only done that a few times. It's less expensive if I make my own cat food uh, but I decided to mostly go with the pre-made uh, frozen raw meat cat food that I get at the health food pet store. Thankfully, in Seattle, we have a couple different, uh, well, actually several different pet stores that specialize in organic natural food for cats and dogs. And um, well, actually, they, I think they have food for rabbits there too, other pets too. Uh, but I feed him and it's been over a year. It's been a year and a half. I don't know, it's been at least a year and a half, and he's been eating uh, basically a raw diet, basically raw meat diet with no carbs, and because cats don't need carbohydrates, that's for sure, and I am also on a low-carb diet, so my cat and I are both, I'm not diabetic, and I'm not hypoglycemic, I'm uh, my blood sugar is fine, but I want to prevent I never want to get diabetic or hypoglycemic. I Basically, I'm doing preventative health care. I'm going to be 50 later this month, so I changed my diet. Uh, I went off grain and wheat six years ago, which helped my thyroid. To make a long story short, they took me off the thyroid medication because I had low thyroid. And the naturopathic doctor I saw said that some people, when they stop eating uh, wheat and grain and lots of carbs and they get like eat lower carbohydrates and uh, healthy fat and medium amount of protein, sometimes that helps their immune system, which then helps whatever other health problems they have. So for me, it was my thyroid was low active and I've been exercising my entire life so I'm fairly muscular and I have good cardiovascular fitness and good blood pressure and all of that but apparently my thyroid was low active and so the theory is it could be because I was a bredaholic I was like addicted to wheat and grain and I, w I wasn't really addicted to rice maybe but I was addicted to wheat like I would eat some I would eat like bread and I'd be like give me some more give me some more like I could never get enough bread you know, I loved olive bread and rosemary bread and put butter or avocado on my toast. And I still like drool when I smell bread, but I know it's not good for me because when I eat it, I feel like my blood sugar goes up and then it goes down and then I have like mood swings. And um, so I feel like bread is very addictive for me personally and I feel so much healthier without it. So my cat and I, so this isn't just about human nutrition, this is also about pet nutrition. There's a, a vet online that I love. Uh, what is her name? I think it's Karen Becker, Dr. Karen Becker. She's a, a holistic vet. She's a regular mainstream vet, veterinary medicine person, but she's also a holistic vet trained in wildlife rehabilitation. And I love animals. I love nature. I love plants. I love animals. And oh, thank you, whoever's joining me. Um... Oh, you have thyroid issues. Okay, sorry, I can't quite read the messages, but I will respond uh, as I read them or I'll write you comments. Thank you for tuning in. Um, oh, she loves it. Okay, so you're talking about raw food for your pet or something? So I'm not sure what, so forgive me, I will catch up on these comments, but I was gonna say um, uh, pet food Dogs and cats and humans, I think, can all benefit from lower carbohydrates. And especially dogs and cats really don't need carbohydrates, but I think I'm convinced that humans also, we don't really need hardly any carbs. From fruits and vegetables, hey, that's great. Uh, I don't even eat very much fruit right now. I'm cutting, I cut way down on fruit, but I've exercised my whole life, but I was a carboholic. Some people call it a carbivore, and I love like pizza and bread. And uh, I eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and like healthy stuff, but I was really into bread and I feel so much better without it. And my cat uh, is happy and healthy as far as I can tell. He's still mildly diabetic, but I feed him just raw meat. I feed him like he gets venison, he gets beef, lamb, chicken, turkey, salmon, 
uh, I don't know, every kind of meat, pork, every kind of meat I can find at the health food pet store, I feed my cat. And he also gets salmon oil, brewer's yeast, and coconut oil. And this also helps his blood sugar. And I came up with this plan and, and digestive enzymes. I add, uh, because my cat is mildly diabetic, the naturopathic vet or holistic vet I went to told me that if I put powdered digestive enzymes and also vitamin and mineral supplement, I mix that into his raw uh, cat food and it helps him digest it. Since he's mildly diabetic, he has some challenges with digestion, but ever since I switched him, because his, his poop, not to be gross, but my cat's bowel movements used to be kind of loose and really stinky and kind of gross, and ever since I switched him to a raw meat diet, my cat, his poop has been like dark brown and like firm, and easily comes out of him and it doesn't really have that much of a stinky smell. So I think his digestion is a lot healthier than it used to be. And his pee doesn't smell as sugary or sweet. You know, I, I smell his waste. <laughs> to make sure he's okay, I look at his digestive uh, situation and his fur is nice and shiny and I take him for walks so he gets fresh air and exercise and I feed him like really healthy food and when I'm gone I have an automatic feeder and so every two hours my cat gets freeze-dried meat. He gets a uh, liver, let's see, liver and heart that's freeze-dried and he gets um, a special turkey or chicken mix that's nutritionally balanced for all life stages for cats. I forgot the brand name, but there's a lot of different uh, freeze-dried raw meat uh, snacks for cats and dogs. And so when I'm not home, every two hours he gets like a, a freeze-dried meat snack with no carbs, just meat. And then when I'm home, he gets whenever he feels like it because um, my cat is mildly diabetic and if I give him a big meal, he'll gulp it down and then he might throw up. And so what I do is I feed him lots of really small meals throughout the day whenever he wants a meal. The, the holistic vet told me, feed your cat whenever he wants food because he's pretty thin and he's gained weight and so now he's healthy, a healthy weight. He's slim, but he's not overly slim. And so I feed him a whole bunch of really small meals throughout the day. And then he sleeps with me at night in my bed and usually he doesn't wake me up until about mm, 6 or 7 a.m. and then I feed him in the morning. But I feed him just whenever he wants it. And so he is happy and his fur looks good, his eyes look good, he looks happy, he plays with me, so his energy is good, he runs, he jumps. Because usually cats are, that are severely diabetic, they become very lethargic and they either are really overweight or they're really underweight. But he is slim and trim, um, but I think he has enough weight on him now, finally. So that's, that's my cat. My cat is mildly diabetic, as I said. And so I'm in favor of people experimenting with their diets of, because their cats, cat, cat food and dog food, I was feeding him grain-free, um, thinking that that was fairly healthy, but I was feeding him canned food and I was avoiding dry food because that dehydrates uh, cats and dogs to feed them too much kibble. So I switched him to just uh, wet food, but the problem is the, the wet food that was grain-free uh, had potato starch in it or potatoes, I don't know, the other, other kinds of carbs that weren't grain. Some of them have rice. They don't have wheat, but then they have rice. And it says no, no corn, no soy. To make a long story short, some of the grain-free uh, cat food has, it's kind of high in carbs. It doesn't have grain, but it has other kinds of like potato and pea carbohydrates, which for a diabetic cat is very not good, very unhealthy. So he is on a no carb diet, which means a strict carnivore diet. He gets nothing but meat. And so what was I going to say? So I'm, I'm feel, I feel sad for all the cats and dogs that are diabetic and, and overweight and obese. Just like humans are becoming more and more diabetic and obese, probably because we eat too much. We, we snack. If you eat a meal every two hours, your insulin, your body has to secrete more insulin. And if you're constantly having to secrete insulin, then your body never gets a rest and your body is constantly digesting food and it can never burn its own fat. And so basically cats and dogs and humans all can become obese and diabetic from eating too many, one, from eating too many carbs, two, from eating too often. Now my cat, I'm, I don't, I don't uh, have him on a, he's not intermittent fasting. <laughs> I'm intermittent fasting. I don't think that he needs to intermittent fast. Uh, I feed him several small meals a day, but me, I eat one or two meals every day. I'm basically fasting. I started 
16-8, which means 16 hours of, of resting from eating and then eight hours of eating. And then now I'm at 20, I think 20 hours of fasting, resting from eating, and four hours of actually eating. And I was gonna maybe go to one meal a day, but I don't think I'm ready for that. I think I'm gonna stick with kind of a four hour eating window, kind of like, kind of like two meals or however much I wanna eat in that four hour window. It's not really, it's kind of grazing for four hours at this point. And so like four to 8 p.m. seems to be the time that I'm gravitating to right now. And so, and if I work during, because I work as an art model, I bring food with me if I have to. So basically to make a long story short, for cats, dogs, and humans, I think less carbs can be very helpful because of what it does to your insulin. You know, if you eat lots of insulin, okay, my eyesight isn't so perfect, so I'm trying to read. I'm gonna to respond to all of your comments. Oh, can I even see the comments? Like, forgive me, hi everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle. And I'm, I'm seeing live comments um, but I'm wondering if I can respond to them verbally here or how can I actually have access and see them because I'm not that experienced with live broadcasting on YouTube. Uh, but I would like to respond to all of your comments, but I can't see them right now. So I'm wondering if are they stored somewhere that I can respond later? I'm not sure. So forgive me if not, because I think I did a previous live video and then the comments people made disappeared and I didn't know how to respond to them. So the live chat comments, uh, you don't eat a lot, but you take vitamin, you take vitamins. Okay. So I was taking a B complex natural vitamin from the health food store and then I take some vitamin D sometimes and I have spirulina, but right now I'm not really taking vitamins. I'm mostly just eating certain foods. Uh, I'm trying to get grass fed meat when I eat meat and I get eggs from a uh, local small farms, pasture raised chickens and I eat vegetables. But I was just saying that the whole carbohydrate thing people and pets are becoming more and more diabetic and obese. And um, that's sad to me. And I feel like a lot of, of people, dogs, cats, and humans would improve their health if they experimented. Because sadly, the food pyramid for both dogs, cats, and humans is, you know, they, they don't really warn you about carbohydrates and what that does to your blood sugar and your insulin. Because your blood sugar can be normal, but your insulin level might be really high. Because when they check your blood sugar, they don't check your insulin level, they just check your blood sugar. So for years, you could be told that your blood sugar level is normal, but then suddenly your insulin, suddenly your pancreas can't keep up with the amount of carbs, and then your, your, um, your body's having to pump more and more, you're becoming insulin insensitive basically, and the more carbs you eat, the more your body has to pump out more and more and more insulin, and then eventually if you become pre-diabetic or diabetic type two, that's because you've exhausted your pancreas with eating too many carbs or snacking too often throughout the day. So I'm curious what my insulin level is because I've never had, I've never been told what my fasting insulin level is. Uh, my blood sugar level is always normal. I've never had hot, too high or too low blood sugar as far as I know. So, but I want to keep it that way and I want to maintain my health. I'm going to head into my 50s soon and I'm still having my regular menstrual cycle. Uh, and my mom, I think, didn't go through menopause till her mid 50s or maybe even 56 or something. And so her menopause was just fine. She said it was. My mom said she kept waiting for some dramatic thing to happen with menopause and she said it never happened. She just sort of gradually, her hormones have changed and she's fine. So I hope my menopause is like that, but I'm 49 right now and I'm still having my period every month you know, regularly. So, but as I head into my 50s, I, I am uh, burning off my belly fat because I gain weight in the mostly in the belly area. And I hope my connection is still good. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining me. Um, I guess there was three of you, now there's two of you. Thank you for liking my video. I guess I'm just rambling on about nutrition for both humans and pets. And I really do think that's, that carbohydrates can, can lead to diabetes over you know sugar and carbs like bread and 
cookies and crackers and cakes and you know like dr eric berg likes to say i love the way he says cookies and cookers and cakes and pasta and blah blah blah, blah and he rattles them off really quick it's like all of that stuff i consider junk food at this point like it's just may as well eat candy if you're gonna eat lots of bread even whole grain stone ground you know i used to get ezekiel bread and all this kind of bread but it was addictive and i would smell it and just drool and i could never get enough and i could feel that my blood sugar was going way up and then way down when i ate bread and it just stimulated my appetite and made me even hungrier so basically i've lost 25 pounds by intermittent fasting every single day of the week and now I'm uh, 20 hours of fasting and four hours of eating, and I'm eating semi-keto. I'm not strict keto, but I'm uh, high fat, high healthy fat, low carbohydrate, medium amount of protein. And I'm not eating any grains. And I eat like, if I eat fruit, I eat like half an apple, or I sometimes put like half a banana in my smoothie with a bunch of kale and walnuts and um, avocado and you know healthy fats, basically, and like a green smoothie that has a few berries and half a banana. And then I have this raw hemp protein powder, um, but I don't really have smoothies that often right now. And hemp seed, I put hemp seed and chia seed. And for dessert, when I'm craving ice cream, I get coconut cream from Trader Joe's and then I mix it with a little stevia and chia seeds and unsweetened chocolate like powder, like cacao powder and unsweetened cocoa that you can bake with. I mix that in my blender and then I put a little almond butter or macadamia nuts and I grind that up in my blender. So it's a high fat, low sugar, low carb, sweetened with stevia or your sweetener of choice. You can even just put sugar in it. If you're just trying to get lower sugar in your diet, you could put just like one teaspoon of sugar and sweeten it or a little bit of honey or a little bit of real fruit actually probably be the healthiest uh, or stevia I, I use stevia i don't really love the taste of stevia but i'm avoiding sugar as much as i can right now but <clears throat> i might try some too with strawberries like just real organic strawberries or blueberries mix that in with coconut cream and some avocado and some or almond butter i love raw almond butter i've, I've been getting that lately raw crunchy almond butter and so Thanks for listening. I think I'll, I'll call it call it a day on this video. 22 minutes. So this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle. I have a podcast. I have two different podcasts, one on Anchor and one on Hollow Earth Radio. Um, and I guess I'll just link information about that on below this video. But my website is shannonkringen.com and I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and uh, I'm just all over the internet and I love to share. I have several different blogs and I'm kind of random, and but I'm really interested in nutrition and travel and art. And I'm going to go for a walk. It's a sunny day here in Seattle today and I'm off, which is unexpected. That had changed suddenly and I'm really happy about that because I, I could do a bunch of other things. And so thanks for listening. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to respond to all of the comments I was getting when I was live broadcasting. I hope that I can see those comments. But thank you everyone who commented and thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. And feel free to ask me any questions or comments or share anything with me about your nutrition. Thanks for subbing to my page and you're very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you for telling me I'm interesting because I'm kind of like a strange person, I think in some ways an eccentric and I feel like I lose my train of thought and I kind of go off on all these tangents. To me, everything is connected. Like to me, talking about nutrition for dogs and cats is related to human nutrition because nutrition in general interests me, whether it's for dogs or cats or humans. I also volunteer at the zoo near Seattle and I know some people think zoos are bad, but I think zoos are mostly good. I think it's sad to see animals in captivity, but it's really, really good to know that they are protected. And if they get injured, they get veterinary care, they get food every day, there's no predators chasing after them. And the main thing is that there's no humans destroying their habitat. There's no humans chopping down the tree that they live in. So the animals at the zoo are protected and they also get fed whatever species appropriate diet that they need by the zookeeper people. So I'm really happy to know that and I volunteer at the zoo and I'm very passionate about health and nutrition and exercise and the way I exercise is 
I hate paying for parking. And so what I do is I park several blocks away where I know it's free to park and then I walk up to half an hour to get to where I'm going. And so that gives me free parking and exercise. And so I save money on parking and I also get really good exercise. So the way I exercise is, because I don't really like gyms that much, I just go for walks, I ride my bike, I have some weights that I lift at home and I put on a nice video and watch a, you know, a movie or something or listen to a podcast and or watch a YouTube channel. Uh, and I listen to a lot of Kayla Cox's videos on her YouTube channel, Six Miles to Supper. I really enjoy her, I enjoy Eric Berg. Me on the other night, I... Uh... Save the animal. Sorry, I couldn't quite read that. My eyesight is a little bit like not great. So I have a little bit of astigmatism and I don't have my glasses on. So <laughs> I couldn't quite read that. But I love animals. I love uh, nature. I love plants. I love animals. Long time no see, Shannon. Glad you're back. Yay, thank you so much. I just learned how to do live, video live because I don't have a lot of space left on my smartphone. And so I can't really store huge videos. And so it's nice I can just go live. And um, I meant to have this place the other way, but thank you. So yeah, I'm really into nutrition and I'm really into health and for my cat and myself. And I'm really happy that he is doing well and I don't have to give him insulin. Because if I give him insulin, that means I constantly have to check his blood sugar. And if his blood sugar ever got too low when I was at work, he could have a seizure and that could be fatal. So I don't want to mess around with the risk of low blood sugar for my cat. And so that's why I have him on a raw meat diet and I'm not giving my cat insulin. And he also, I have a glucometer and he hates having his ear pricked because that's how you check a cat's blood sugars. You have to prick their ear. Whereas I would prick my finger to check my blood sugar. I could even check it. I'm not diabetic or hypoglycemic, but I could check my blood sugar anytime I want because I do have a glucometer. I'm kind of curious what my blood sugar is when I'm fasted. Because I fast between 16 to 18 to 20 hours a day. Lately it's been 20 hours. I'm heading in that direction of one meal a day. So, okay, I guess that's all I'm gonna say for now. But I will say that thanks for anybody who's here with me. Hi, there's three of you here, hello. Thank you for joining me. And for those of you joining after I record this and put it online, thank you. Feel free to ask me any questions or comments and um, comment, I guess, on this video below because I don't really know how to respond to live. It seems like the live comments disappear once I upload this to YouTube. So I'm not really sure how that works, forgive me. But um, if you have any questions or comments or want to share your story with me, feel free to write it in the comment section of this video after I upload it. I guess you can't do that now. You have to wait till I upload it. Is that how it works? <laughs> I don't know. So I'm gonna go for a walk and run some errands. And um, th this is really fun doing live videos and then just uploading them. It's really fun. And because I did a public access TV show in Seattle for 15 years every week and I kind of miss that. I also do a radio, I do a radio show now that's one hour, but sometimes that's music and poetry and other times it's monologues about whatever topic I want to think about. So, yeah. So if you have a cat or dog that has health problems, you know, feel free to ask me anything because my cat is is really quite um, happy and he's kind of thriving right now. And I, I give him coconut oil and brewer's yeast. I know it sounds weird, but I looked it up and it's good for cats. And my, my uh, naturopathic vet assured me that that's fine for him and it helps his blood sugar and salmon oil. Um, so he's on kind of a high fat, medium protein. He's on a similar diet to me, low carb. So yeah, so I'm just, I'm really passionate about nutrition. I almost want to study nutrition. The problem is I could not follow the mainstream guidelines because they still tell diabetic people to eat plenty of whole grains, which is really high carbohydrate, not good for the blood sugar. So I couldn't really subscribe to some of the mainstream nutrition ideas that I don't agree with. And I think I would legally be required to say certain things. And I don't, I can't really follow the mainstream nutritional guidelines at this point. So. I guess, yeah, I'm an artist and I model for a living for artists and medical students. So I think just nutrition is my hobby and I'm my own science experiment, me and my cat. My cat is thriving, he's happy and I'm happy and my depression has gotten a lot better. I still see a therapist and I need to exercise to, you know, to get the endorphins for my health, mental health and physical health. 
Uh, but I also, also just listening to music, you know, makes me happy. But I think that doing things that increase your endorphins, you know, whether it's um, fasting actually kind of makes me high. I've, I've been fasting since last night at like 8 p.m. I stopped eating last night and I think I'm going to eat at 4 p.m. today. From 4 to 8 p.m. I'm going to eat um, high fat, low carb, whatever I feel like eating really. But um, generally I'm semi-keto, kind of paleo, kind of keto. <laughs> So thank you for listening. So feel free to share any questions or comments with me or yeah. So yeah, have a good day, everyone. This has been fun. Bye for now.